<laughs> okay. Uh, hello, everybody. It's Will Menneker here. Uh, Chapo coming at you in just a short few. Uh, but before then, we're going to plug, plug, plug two things that we'd like you to know about. We have booked a second show for our trip to Portman, Portland. That's Portland, Oregon, not Portland, Maine. We will be playing the Aladdin Theater on Thursday, August 4th. We will have a pre-sale for our Patreon subscribers going live at 10 a.m. Pacific time. That's 1 p.m. East Coast time on Wednesday, June 15th. That's this upcoming Wednesday and a general sale on Friday, June 17th. So come and see us. Uh, come see us there. Uh, I believe Pickathon is basically sold out, uh, though they might be releasing a small amount of tickets uh, in the lead up to the festival. So keep your eye on that. But our Pickathon set and the rest of the fest will be streamed over Frequency. We'll have more info on that soon. We will have links to the tickets on both Patreon and over our Twitter, over on our Twitter and in the episode description for the upcoming midweek episode. Uh, number two, merch, merch, merch. We are running a summer sale on our entire merch store from this Tuesday to the, through the end of July. Everything in the store is 25% off. We've had some restocks on uh, some of our hot designs. So if you were looking uh, for something that wasn't there the last time, please check again. We're trying to sell down as much as we can before we do our next merch run. So get it while the getting is good. Hop on over to shop.trapohouse.com. Uh, but unfortunately, we don't have any news of pot of oil hats. So... That's why you got to get that merch down. Okay, uh, that's all the information you need to know. Uh, on to the show, featuring Snobby Baby. Okay, all right. It's Chapo, Monday, June 13th. We're kicking the week off right no need to delay any further joining us for this episode we got the man with the diamond cock the original <laughs> king of comedy it's a million dollar stavi baby in the house how's it going That's my right. friend what's up you little motherfuckers thank you for having me the, uh, the million view on youtube man the million million view man how's that how's That's that how's right. that treating you how's that life call me Call me 1.4 Stavros. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> and this time, it's not a pejorative nickname. <laughs> this time, this time, it's, it's it's referring to the millions of views my special has amassed in a week, and not my hard penis, uh, my the inches of hard penis I have. <laughs> I think uh, I think this marks it. You are you are going to be the first one of the class of 2016 out of the podcast ghetto. I hope you so. are. You are Adrian Brody and the pianist. No Holocaust for you. <laughs> I cannot wait to do a tell all where I disavow all of you. Where I talk about how you all forced me to fucking believe uh, to, to be misogynist against women when I was uh, campaigning for Bernie. I can't wait till I, Will Medicker had a gun to my head and he forced me to, to call women whores. Uh, I, want, <laughs> I can't wait to be speaking at the Democratic. I can't wait to be uh, stop for Beto. Uh, and just at, at one of his campaign events talking about how we don't actually need uh, Medicare for all. We just need we just need to believe in our doctors more. Uh, when, when, I, when I have an NBC sick, I'm going to I'm going to disavow everyone. I'm going to get plugs. I can't wait, dude. I'm going to I'm going to it's going to be awesome. Uh, yeah. Uh, Stav starring in uh, Roman Polanski's new film, The 1.4 Inch Pianist. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, thank you for having me. And if for anyone before we get into the fucking app, for anyone who hasn't seen it yet, I released a special completely for free on YouTube. It's called Live at the Lodge Room. It's on my YouTube channel. 1.4 milli so far. Let's get that fucker up there. Okay. I, I spent a lot of money on I spent a lot of this <laughs> podcast money on making that shit happen. So I need the views to make it back. All right. I, I mean I stop. You know, that 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 may sound impressive, but like, I mean, at the end of the day, you're bragging about posting a YouTube video on your own <laughs> channel. <laughs> yeah, shout out to Tom Myers, man. Truly just no, a I fucking don't... king. <laughs> well, I mean, like, just, just yeah, you're, you're an original king of comedy, but like you have the god emperor of comedy is eviscerating you. You were you, you were <laughs> yeah, getting just... he's just pouring gasoline on you and you've got a tire around your neck and you're just like, Tom, you no, need that, though. stop, please. You need that to stay humble. Yeah, I know. I know. He like, put me right back in my fucking place. Tom, <laughs> Tom, let me know. It, it's just fucking YouTube. I am. I'm not shit. But, you know, I'm not the announcer for the Aberdeen Ironbirds. 
uh, the, the single A, the single A ball club over there in Aberdeen, Maryland. <laughs> well, I, I I consider it very similar. I consider it very similar to sort of David Schwimmer in Band of Brothers. Yes, like he's he pushed you during yeah. uh, Currahy, which is the Baltimore comedy scene. That's right. And you you know now you have all your decorations, your decorations from going overseas, from getting a million views, from. Right. Uh, having one of the most successful non-true crime podcasts on Patreon. <laughs> yeah. And maybe he does need to be reminded that you salute the rank, not the man. That's right. That's right. And, and my four star, my four star comedy general will forever be Tom Myers. That's the man f always <laughs> and forever. My guiding my, my Northern star. And if anybody here has, isn't familiar with the comedy of Tom Myers, literally he is unironically one of my favorite comedians. And I won't say any more. Just if you're yes. not familiar, go go find his stuff. He's got a couple incredible albums. Uh, Words of Mass Destruction. Um, make America Innate Again. <laughs> make America Innate Again. How could I forget? And he's got I think there's another one called uh, Shot from the Quip or Shoot from the Quip. <laughs> that is. Oh, that's God a good damn. One. That's some wordplay. <laughs> yeah, wow. He's, fuck, he's the fucking man. He's the fucking man. <laughs> I don't want to say any more because Tom is on my ass and. uh <laughs> I don't want to. I don't want to open myself up to any more um, public humiliations at the hand of Tom Myers. But you know, I I just want to pay my respects to the king, and um, maybe one day I'll earn his respect. If we listen, guys, if you're listening right now, let's get to two million. Let's get to five million. Let's get to ten. I just want Tom Myers to respect me. Well, if you do perform at the DNC by disavowing us and like. You know, yeah. four years or so, <laughs> he will respect you. You know, yes, <laughs> that's true. I can't wait damage. to be. I'm joy. You know what? I changed my mind. Even Beto's not good enough. I'm going full K Hive. Yes. I'm going full K Hive. Me and a bunch of me and the skinniest, meanest, uh, fucking gay guys you've ever met in your life. <laughs> it's just gonna be us. I'm gonna. We're gonna be taking Peloton classes and talking about how mayo ass white boys need to fucking sit down and <laughs> shut up and listen. I yeah. can't fucking wait. <laughs> you, you, you and a bu you and a bunch of guys who have been adjunct professors for forty five years. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Having tacky yes. happy hours with some of the most unnerving HR women on earth. Yeah, absolutely, <laughs> absolutely. Just a just a forty year old uh, white lady with with just like the biggest veneers you've ever seen, telling me that, <laughs> telling me how many things are cap and on period. <laughs> I can't wait for that. <laughs> they just learned it yesterday. <laughs> Well, uh, uh, Stabby Baby, I mean, you got the new comedy special. You've been out on the road, you know, honing your craft. But, like, I, I guess the thing I'm interested in is, like, look, we're, we're, we're in a very, it's a very interesting time for comedy. And I think we can all agree that, like, you know, stand-up comedians are either going to save America from fascism right. or condemn us to a new Holocaust. So I guess I just, <laughs> like, I guess I just like to... It's going to be us. <laughs> I would just like to just, like, make clear, though, like... You know, if, if people watch your stand up special, are you doing the kind of good comedy that that is promotes democracy and is against fascism? Or are you doing the bad kind of comedy that is um, uh, augering and uh, ushering in a new Third Reich? For the time being, I am doing the good kind <laughs> until I can sell out. I am doing the good kind. I have no transphobic material yet. OK, but Netflix, Netflix cash sends me a fucking 80 million dollar check. I'm talking about how it's uh, an affront to God to chop your penis off if that's what they want. If that's what it's going to take for me to make Chappelle money, I'll fucking do it. But for right now, I am doing I am I am good while I haven't made it yet. While I haven't sold out. Uh, well, I'm not a stooge. I'm, I'm I'm doing the good kind. I'm still a good guy. That's for, it's mostly for, about how my dick is small. It's <laughs> it's so funny because my mom, my mom called me and she was like, how pr she was telling me how proud she was of me. And it was it felt nice, you know. But it's also like this, this, this special literally is like, OK, there's there's some topical stuff. There's like, you know, stuff about getting fat as shit. There's stuff about boomers, all that kind of shit. There's a joke about assassinating Jeff Bezos, that kind of stuff. But then the rest of it is talking about how, like, fucked up our family was and how little my penis is. The times I couldn't get hard, like 40 percent of it is things that uh, any any mother who didn't love her son that much would be horrified to hear about. But all my shit is about how, you know. Uh, you know, our fucked up Greek family and just the one time I, I almost died taking too many dick pills. So that's the, and she's like, she just calls me. She's like, I love you so much. She was like, <laughs> she's like, I'm uh, shout uh, out to Greek moms. 
uh, Stavros, I'm so proud of you. And it's just like, well, I wish I could be proud of you, but I wish I could be proud of this small ass dick I have. But, you know, yeah, who, yeah, who do I have thanks, to thank mom. for that? Who do I have to thank for thanks, that? Thanks, mom. You're hiding half of a small dick gene somewhere <laughs> somewhere in your pussy. <laughs> and you really, you, fuck, you fucking condemn me to this life. <laughs> when you think about it, it is kind of the mom's fault, whether it gets passed down patrilineally or not, because she does, like, she does mm. see it. Right. Like if it gets passed down through the dad, she made the decision of seeing it or right. not knowing if it's in yet and being like, Absolutely. this is fine to create a son with. Yeah. It was totally flaunting all of the genetic imperatives to pick a big dick player. If you're going to have a kid. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. Right. Either she failed to pick a big dick, a big dick, a hard cock savage, or she did pick one and her little dick genes are so strong <laughs> That they forced you to have a little dick. So it's either way, you're right, Felix. It's the mom's fault if your penis is small. Exactly. Or, 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 you know, let's, uh, let's expand this for everybody. Yeah, please. If you are one of those many unfortunate ladies whose clit is just too small to be found, that is, that's an XX chromosome of a small right. dick. Yeah. You know, if you were a man, if you were a man, it would be a small dick. But since you're a woman, your patrilineal, Small dick genes created, uh, you know, a clit the size of, I don't know, uh, like a thumbtack, probably half sure, a thumbtack. Sure. Oh, interesting. I never thought of I never thought of that. There is a, that is an intergender camaraderie of little dickery where it's like if as a man, you just can't hit the back walls. But as a woman with the little dick gene, that means you can never get your shit played with correctly because it's just too, it's, a, it's like a game of where's waldo yeah but it no one ever yes no to find ever. their little ass clit that's interesting feel yeah Unless, so you're saying like the women the the china the the joni lawlers the chinas yes. with just the absolute almost a penis clits Gum, those are balls. the lucky those are the lucky women yeah the gumballs yes yes <laughs> the shit you it seems like you got out of a fucking grocery store vending machine <laughs> Well, I, I just don't like I don't like that it's, you know, we castigate men for having small dicks, which just like in the interest of evolution, we should, you know, right. Just greater good and all. But of course, when a guy can't find a woman's clit or just doesn't want to, it's never on the woman for it being small. <laughs> we got we're going to start a dialogue here tonight. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> if you if you if you if a man can't find your clit, you ever think maybe your shit is fucking too camouflaged, too fucking tiny? Let's fuck it. You're you're so fucking right, Felix. Yeah. Thank you so much for bringing this up. I'm gonna start rumors about women. Just be like, oh yeah, you think she's hot? <laughs> Tiniest clit you've ever seen. Tiny clit. But by the way, the whole gigantic. That's a tough combo. <laughs> yeah. That's gonna be a couple. <laughs> that's gonna be a couple gals out there. <laughs> pin pinwheel like pin top clit and just the fucking softball size opening uh, <laughs> that's, that's, that's fellas <laughs> fellas we are we are uh, we are opening a new front in the uh the campaign against women's self-esteem yeah we're getting all this body positivity if you're a plus size person but now let's focus back on the pussy let's get let's get yes. back in there and let's fucking eviscerate the pussy if you see a woman acting obnoxiously, uh, like, you know, bridal party style, yeah. from now on, say that she's compensating for her tiny clit. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> That's great. And I'm going to run with that. I love it. So my mom also listens to every episode of this, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> my entire family, really. All right. <laughs> so great. for the moms out there. Yes. Have you have you been watching the riveting live congressional testimony about the january 6th coup attempt because i I've you know been, I've obviously i've been glued to the screen you know uh unfortunately i haven't had a chance to but the one thing i will say is that i can't wait for donald trump to finally be brought to justice <laughs> as we all know he will be very very soon so i'll probably watch the public beheading um, <laughs> until then i'm just gonna which is happening any day now uh and but until then i'm kind of i'm kind of checked out you know I feel you. Do you, do you do, I mean, like, do you, do you worry, though, that like your sort of duties as a citizen of a democracy, like you are, you are you worried that you're shirking your responsibility by not paying attention to this, um, you know, sort of uh, just, you know, like a stunning moment of history that's happening before our eyes? 
Uh, yes, I, I often worry about I wonder how how history will judge me as I've decided to watch Bosch Legacy <laughs> instead of <laughs> instead of the congressional <laughs> hearings. I, it is something that keeps me up at night, Will. But, you know, like I said, it's just we've all made our choices. I mean, uh, I don't know. Like, it's just I, I know that I know they want to have it. Like, they're having it on in prime time. But like the problem is there are too many other good shows right now. <laughs> yeah. I mean, like, it's just it's the network's fault. They uh, fucked by the up. Way, they're, go, they're going head to head with the finals right now. You know, we've got, the, <laughs> we got the NBA finals tonight. No chance I'm watching that. I'm watching. Uh, the, by the way, uh, uh, Savi, you got, you got you're like, you're like the Celtics or the Warriors here. Dude, it's really hard because I fucking hate both of these teams. <laughs> and I'd love to just to, to bring this to a wider audience. Uh, Boston can suck my dick in general. Uh, they've had a championship every fucking year. So, like somebody who's like 25, Boston has won like four championships. Like every, like they've never known not winning. You know what I mean? They're just they've gotten too many titles. Fuck them. They can suck my dick. And then the Warriors, it's just like, it's like it's hard rooting for like rooting for the Warriors. It's a little less so now, but like when they had Kevin Durant, it was like rooting for gentrification because it was just like they were unstoppable. They were just like had all the money in the world. They were going to fucking run through the whole league. And, you know, it's nice to see. I guess the longer it's gone on, I I am I'm rooting for Steph Curry a little bit because he's the one with the most on the line legacy wise. And the best part is his parents are currently in a partner swapped relationship. Uh, Steph's parents uh, bro- uh, got divorced last year, and now they are each uh, dating a couple that also got divorced last year. So his mom, his mom is dating this like ex college football player, like you know down south type of you know good old boy type looking motherfucker. And now Del Curry is dating. Del Curry has surfaced with that guy's wife. Which is honestly one of the funniest subplots <laughs> of the whole final. So that had to have been like a polycule explosion of some kind. Yeah, 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 yeah. They found out. They found out. Uh, they had. They had more. Um, they were more compatible. Uh, more compatible clit sizes with each couple. <laughs> that they could. They could find. Del Curry. Listen, one of the great sharpshooters. Right. That's. There's no. It's no coincidence. Steph Curry is is a great three point shooter as well. He got it from his dad. Does Del Curry have that accuracy with tiny clits? And maybe this this blonde lady has a tiny ass clip that her husband couldn't find. Well, <laughs> a lot of great questions to ask. So I think I'm mostly pulling for the Warriors because uh, their star players' parents are in some kind of weird, fucked up wife swap situation. And that's kind of since I don't like either of these teams, that's going to keep me through. That's going to fucking that's going to carry me through. Well, there we go. Some uh, NBA analysis from uh, shout out know, to the, Sonia uh, Curry. She looks great with the braids, by the way. Steph's <laughs> Steph's mom could really get it. Excellent. Oh, and uh, as long as we're talking about um um uh, things we're watching on television, stuff. I've been wanting to pick your brain. Have you watched any of the new David Simon series? We own this city. You know, I have a huge backlog of shit I want to watch. That's at the top of the list. Unfortunately, okay. I have not watched it yet. I, I bring it up because uh, John Berenthal has like basically. I think like the creators of that show owe you royalties for your Dundalk <laughs> character guy. <laughs> <laughs> because I mean, I, honestly, I mean, like, like I, I'm from an outsider's perspective here, but I think John Berenthal, one of our most goaded actors, and his fucking Absolutely. like Dun- Dundalk shithead accent he does on this show, is because like he plays a like a terrifyingly vicious and corrupt racist cop. Of course, but when he but the yeah. way he talks is so funny. I'm like, I I, I want to hang out with this guy. He seems pretty cool. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's the thing about those guys. <laughs> like, a hundred percent. Like half the guy. So I do. Basically, John Berenthal's character. Not having seen it, just knowing it is like, you know, a racist, vicious cop. I, my my Dundalk, my Baltimore guy is that guy's like fuck up brother. You know what I mean? Like it runs in the family. Like it's he couldn't like, make it. He couldn't hack it in the academy. Yeah, exactly. You're too fat. Yeah, you're too fat to, to be a cop, which is actually I guess, you know, who knows how fat you have to be. But you, you're too fat to be a cop. You couldn't hack it in the academy. You couldn't do their little multiple choice thing. So you just like you're just racist, like. Uh, as a hobbyist instead of professional, <laughs> it's, like, it's like you turn. It's like those, those guys turn pro and become Baltimore City cops that don't live in the city. But their brothers are still doing like pick up, pick up racism. You know, just around, just, just <laughs> at the park being racist, even though his brothers in the league. You know what I mean? Being a cop. I mean, um, like stop. There, there so, is literally a char- there is literally a character on the show that is like that guy 
who's like it's like he's John Berthold's friend who who's like a former criminal who run, now runs a bail bonds uh, operation. Yes, exactly. And he just exactly. he just uses him to like fence all of the drugs he steals from drug dealers and shit. And it's so yeah, funny, dude. like all all of the all of, all of the white dudes on on this show. Like I, I swear to God, if there is a single frame of this show in which they are not wearing a Ravens or Orioles attire, I haven't seen it yet. <laughs> yeah, <And by, laughs> I've not seen and it. Listen, that's how it is, dude. Everyone loves the fuck, and that goes deep. That goes with me too. My little brother got married at the courthouse. One of my brothers got married, like big ceremony. And it's that's how much I love my little brothers. How different they are as people. You know, one my my brother had a big ceremony. It was awesome. And then my other brother just like was like, I'm not doing any of that shit. He just went to the courthouse. Fucking sport coat, O's t-shirt underneath, baby. He just got like, married. So that shit runs deep in, in Baltimore, baby. Let's go, birds. Let's fucking go. But yeah, I love it. I can't wait to see it. I would say um, former criminal, uh, bail bondsman, Baltimore white, probably has never said the N-word, right? <laughs> Ever. <laughs> Probably the least likely guy to have ever said that in anger, right? <laughs> um, I the what I say about Baltimore Dundalk and and Hamden and Hamden another uh, neighborhood is that it leads it leads the world in white women with mixed race children that use the N word. It's <laughs> yeah. just it's off the charts. That's what, who we're dealing with. That's the thing. You're right, Felix. It's not that they haven't said it in anger. It's that they say it like for fun way more than they've definitely said it in anger, but they just say it rapping or they just refer to themselves as one like they love. It's in their vocab, brother. It's, it's in there yeah. in so many ways. They're the best. It's like how it's you so can, funny. Yeah, it's like how you can fire a shot in anger and people are like, well, what how what other times do you fire a shot? It's usually in anger. Well, like at an Arab wedding when they fire yes. guns in the air. <laughs> yeah, yeah, They're yeah, doing yeah. the equivalent with that word, I 100%. presume. That's exactly what it is. Every Sunday at, when the Ravens are playing, it might as well be a fucking Lebanese wedding. Uh, <laughs> it, it, a Lebanese <laughs> N-word wedding in, in Dundalk, Maryland. <laughs> uh, yeah. uh, well, uh, I, I guess like a uh, light spoiler here, but uh, there there is a scene on the show where uh, John Berenthal's character... Uh, robs a dwarf stripper, like That's takes a so dwarf sick. takes a dwarf to the champagne room and then robs her and runs out of the strip club. And I was like, hey, "Stop getting getting a writing credit on this show." But then I remember, like, oh wait, <laughs> yeah. uh, then I remember, oh wait, this show is all one hundred percent true and based on like FBI documents of like the Baltimore Gun yes. Tra- Race Task Force. <laughs> Yes, yes. There. I mean, that's the thing. I still have the book. Obviously, I haven't read it yet. A part of me was like, I want to read the book before I re- watch it. But it's like, you know, maybe I'll fucking I do want to read the whole book. But yeah, I mean, that's the thing about Baltimore, man. It's just like so hysterically corrupt. <laughs> and it's like, you know, it's just like we I don't think we've had one mayor that hasn't gone to jail in like 20 years. <laughs> it was. It's like and they, they their scams are so awesome. Like Sheila Dixon used to do like, I think, just prepaid debit card scams. And then who was the one that um, she ordered more yes. copies of her children's of her book, own her children's Baltimore book. children? <laughs> yeah, Baltimore, yeah, yeah. Her, she ordered her copies of her, own, of her self-published children's book. She ordered more copies than there were students in Baltimore yeah. public schools. <laughs> I, know. I know she fucking Amazing. rules. She was she was after I left. But I remember exactly, that was the la- that was the latest one. Um, and yeah, it was so that's like the scam. That's the level of scams you're doing. How how completely non thought out it is. We're just like, <laughs> yeah, we'll just force the school system that I'm the mayor of to buy <laughs> my shitty book. And and then, and, oh, by the way, it's there's more of them than students. But who cares? It doesn't <laughs> fucking matter. We're not handing them out at all. They're just going. They're saying they're sitting in some warehouse. And by the way, we'll probably try and sell them again on eBay or some shit. But what a. What I love about that scam, too, is like even if they were distributing them, if you're ordering enough for every student in every public school, that means that you're ordering your children's book, which is called like, you know, the girl who wrote a letter for like high school yeah. students. Yeah. yeah. For like yeah. 18 year olds <laughs> yeah, exactly. to read your children's book about like, yeah, how you wanted to grow up cool. to be mayor and like wanted also wanted to be a dog. Yeah. Catherine Pugh. That was her name. I remember. Uh, and I'm trying to find the fuck. Oh, I think it was called the series is called Healthy Holly that promoted exercise and nutritional <laughs> eating <laughs> through stories of an African-American girl named Holly. <laughs> I, 
got to say, I, I, I'm, I'm not going to be a homer here. I'm not going to be, I'm going to be a realistic Chicago fan. I think you guys yeah. have Cook County beat. I think your Ooh, corruption's funny. I really, I appreciate that. I think you guys get, that, that's the thing. It's like, we're a small market team. You mm. know what I mean? We don't have the glitz and glamour. We don't have the, we don't have Al Capone. We don't have the legacy. You know what I mean? We've got, sure, we've got the wire and we've got some really good stuff, but it, we don't get the, we don't get the recognition we deserve because truly it's like there has not been one good local politician in, <laughs> I cannot tell you, fucking years. And there uh, seemed well, to be one, there seemed to be one. And I think they like, I don't know what happened to her. Like, I feel like they, someone was like, hey, we're going to tell people you're a lesbian if you don't quit. Like, there's something <laughs> like that must have happened. Because there were there, every time a promising like Baltimore, they just like disappear off the fucking face of the earth. It's so it's so sick. And I do love uh, I mean, I'll never fully leave Baltimore. My family's yeah. still there. I love going back there. <laughs> Honestly, I'm trying to get into into a little corruption myself. Uh, I would love to figure out a way to just like, you know, get some get some insider info on a development project, buy a couple houses right around the, right right before they get fucking bought up to put a big fucking, you know some big like shitty outdoor mall. You know what I mean? I'm just, I'm excited and I'm hoping that's another thing I'm trying to, I'm part trying to parlay uh, my, you know, any success off the comedy special, any, any, you know, uh, it, it more interest in my career. I'm trying to parlay that into small time homegrown corruption. Just, just cause it feels like a part of, it feels like a rite of passion passage in Baltimore. When you have any kind of money, you're able to make a lot more of it by, you know, stealing from the, the the coffers of government i got an idea get the school district to buy uh in bulk uh your calendar for the class that's a great oh, idea. Yes. <laughs> you're yes. a genius well i was thinking of i'm still working on my self-help book kind of similar to healthy holly it's called the hard dick warrior's way <laughs> and uh, maybe i can get it maybe i can do a similar thing where it's like that's in every baltimore city uh, public schools like library is the, the each 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 school gets one hunt gets ten thousand copies of the Hard oh Dick Warriors Way. Okay, I got an idea. So you do that. Yes. You get Hard Dick Warriors Way into the public schools. Then <laughs> yes. you create a fake like right wing outrage like libs of TikTok tile hysteria about idea. there's this book called Hard Dick Warriors Way in the schools and they like a bunch of fucking proud boys show up. And like have to get right. tased at like a, a the school libraries, and then all the liberals on earth buy copies of it. Yeah, in solidarity. <laughs> that's, a, that's a great idea. I'll go to everyone I ever did open mics with in Baltimore and be like, "You boys want to make twenty dollars? <laughs> put on put on this fucking body armor and take this baton and go, go cause a little ruckus if you know what I'm saying." <laughs> if you, I, I mean, you could you could kind of you could play both sides too. You're you know you could be like, no, I'm I'm grooming them in the other direction. I'm grooming right. them into heterosexuality. Straight. Yeah. <laughs> There's only one way for us to combat this grooming, and that's with our own grooming. <laughs> that's we're showing them big. We're showing all the boys big tits, and they're gonna love it. <laughs> I, did have, I did have a high school. Okay, okay. I had a high school. Okay, okay. You're, a high school soccer up, uh, coach got in trouble for giving us giving a kid porn, not in a gay way, like in a way where he was like, "Oh, thank God." You check, to, check like in a way out. where he's like, "Dude, isn't this sick?" <laughs> he was trying to befriend a fourteen-year-old, and he got he got fired for that. It was awesome. It's just that uh, okay. Like uh, you're rolling up to the the pride event in a U-Haul, and then like the feds yeah. pull up. Yeah, yeah, the, yeah, the, yeah, the, yeah. the fed like the like the feds have it surrounded, and they're just like they open up the back of the U-Haul, and then it's just girls on trampolines. They all just yeah. spill out of the back. <laughs> we got juggies. <laughs> yes. We're doing a tailgate. You open up the U-Haul. It's a fucking pit master. I got some fucking uh, I got a, a couple pork shoulders going overnight. I got some fucking I got some fucking wings and we got sausage and we just got fucking, you know, one big one incredibly obese man in purple camo pants grilling everything up and nothing but girls with fat tits in a wet T-shirt contest. And that's that's what we're rolling up with to uh, in fucking. Yeah, it's just like know, it's like like children, children. No, don't look at that. Don't look at that over here. Over here. Look, look at look at the juggies. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> the only they'll, thing they'll put them in can, your face. The only <laughs> thing that can stop a bad guy with a Discord account is a good guy with a Discord account. <laughs> yeah, that is so true. Mm. We're gonna we're gonna combat uh, P 
people trying to give children basic sex education is just <laughs> fat honking tits. Yeah. <laughs> if some that's fucking, all you need. Some, if that's some all you fucking need. Pervert, if some fucking pervert tries to groom my kids by having a weird earring, yeah. Uh, I, I, yeah, I will be hiring you to take them to pit to the pit beef restaurant. Pit beef, bro. Yes, one of the fucking finest establishments. Uh, some of the best beef you'll get in the parking lot of the Gold Club Strip Club. Uh, it's honestly really good. It is very yeah, good. Uh, pit beef rocks. Pit, yeah, strong endorsement for pit beef. But you'll take them to pit beef and show them. You know, not any of this new shit, not POV, not instructionals, like girls with the worst bolt-ons ever wearing sailor yep. hats. Yep. Just classic. Getting, crimped hair. Crimped yeah. Crimped hair, landing strip, you know, just classic 90s pornography. It's like like Baywatch, like the Baywatch era, like that kind, that style, of, like a Pamela Anderson in a Baywatch style of lady. That's who we're jacking off yes. to. Anything else is gay. <laughs> that, yep. So all that if we Does can jerk kind of, off instruction count as education. Ooh, great. It's like it's like trade school. Yeah, yeah, I think it's more like I think it's more coaching. Yeah. But it is education, you know. That's what it's Pete like, Buttigieg uh, was talking about with getting people in the trades. <laughs> Sign me up. <laughs> Well, you know, as long as we're talking about, you know, uh, social issues, uh, uh, parenting, dating, life. Of course. We got Stavi Baby in the cut, so you know what that means. Yes, I have, I've scoured the Slate.com advice columns, and we Ooh, are now kicking it off. I love Stavi it. solves your problems. We are now I love answering, it. I love it. answering other people's questions with Stavi Baby. So uh, kick, kicking off here. Specialty. Yeah, this is, uh, this is, from, the, this is from the Slate Parenting uh, column because you know we're talking about parenting issues you know we all have kids of course so. of course um, okay <laughs> yeah. so here, here's some here's some unvarnished advice here all right so, so let's okay the question is my wife and to a lesser, lesser extent i have some concerns about our first grade daughter's motivation to improve herself i'm not sure i'm putting this exactly <laughs> right so bear with me holy shit. so I'll, I'll, I'll just stop there and just say uh like the the letter the letter when i clicked on it was like hey like you know dear dear slate like uh, uh, my wife and I are concerned about our daughter's lack of motivation, and I was just like, "Oh wait, like she's not, she's not studying for the ACTs or whatever." And it's like, "No, yeah, my first grade daughter's motivation levels are first like, grade, a fucking six year old. <laughs> yeah. These people are pieces of fucking dog shit." <laughs> yeah. right. no, but go ahead. Hey, hey, the, yes. The way my the way my wife puts it, our daughter tends to assume that she is the best at everything, but when faced with an actual challenge in doing the thing, she immediately gets frustrated and she wants to just give up rather than try. This yeah, probably because up- she's a baby. <laughs> yeah, she's a fucking dumb little kid. Of course. That's what everyone yeah. thinks. I thought, yeah, dude. I thought I was going to be fu- I thought I was going to be an astronaut who also played rock and roll when I was fucking 4 years old. <laughs> it, my 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 internal image of myself was literally John Stamos but in an astronaut helmet. <laughs> like that's who I thought I was when I was 4. I thought I was a fucking piece of ass and I was a genius at the same time. <laughs> that's what every baby thinks about themselves. Anyway. Uh, says th- this recently came up in the context of starting piano lessons. Per my wife, our daughter seemed to pick up the first lesson easily and then went around for the next week talking about how great she is at piano. What a fucking idiot. I uh, hate however, this bitch. <laughs> <laughs> However, <laughs> at the second lesson, she wasn't immediately able to do it and she instantly wanted to quit. She has done this with things as varied as when she learned to read to how she handles playing video games. Perhaps relatedly, although she has always seemed fairly bright, she has always seemed incurious. She never really went through a why phase. And, and going back as long as I can remember, anytime she has realized you were trying to teach her something, she would actively reject your doing so. For example, wow, I that's get really her weird of- that she avoided spending more time with you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Imagine what they're trying to teach this girl. Yeah. These just fucking horrible, just like Python, uh, probably. Yeah. They're, try- they're trying to teach her. Yeah, th- these people fucking stink, dude. These are like these are like mi- these are like fucking uh, middle managers. You know what I mean? Trying to try to I don't know, teach your fucking Sudoku or something fucking boring. You know what I mean? Teach, gotta, show, she, show that baby. You got to make sure she has grits so that she can get a good education and she dude, can be a success. Show this baby John Wick. I bet you she's fucking enraptured. 
Show this baby something that fucking rules. Show her crank, okay? <laughs> <laughs> really? It's Let's re- see if she pays attention. It's really weird that my five-year-old, who I constantly berate for giving up too easily and not being engaged enough, is not spending more time with me learning how to be an anti-racist acupuncturist or whatever <laughs> yeah, yeah, bullshit yeah, yeah, yeah. thing I want her to be. <laughs> yeah, she's getting this baby's bored because they keep trying to read her white fragility. <laughs> <laughs> she's fucking checking out. Uh, anyway, go ahead. Go ahead. The, le- the, the letter ends. I am very open to the idea that this is merely age appropriate, but my wife is concerned it may not be. Any thoughts? So, I mean, how are we going to get? Your wife's a psycho. That's the thought. <laughs> yeah, yes. yeah. Uh, yeah. I don't know. Really? This is this, this, this guy. This is the dad sitting quietly, uh, staring at the wall in his uh, bedroom while his wife is screaming at Dirk Diggler at the beginning of the <laughs> night. <laughs> <laughs> You're stupid. Yeah, guy, You're into yeah. nothing. Everyone throw wide face. <laughs> That's right. I'm special. I'm special. I'm curious. I'm gonna be the best piano player ever. You'll see. You'll see. <laughs> this guy also, to me, feels like not only that guy, but also just William H Macy in, in uh, <laughs> Boogie Nights. This guy is going to kill himself. This woman is cucking him. She seems fucking annoying. Anyone yeah. who's like, what's going on? Our ba- our fu- like. Have you ever tried to do anything? First of all, if I had to fucking go to the same piano lesson that that little kid did, I'd be like, after the first, after hot cross buns, after I nail that, and then the second one, I'd be annoyed. But that's the whole point. That's yeah. the, like your kid is gonna be annoyed. She's a fucking little ass kid. Things are life. First of all, life sucks, dick. Every you have you have cursed this little kid with sentience. She has to be alive. She she has to learn skills. Okay, it sucks, cock to learn new skills it sucks dick to learn of course she doesn't want to learn of course she wants to go fucking play with her dolls or eat fucking pudding or do something that that rules learning anything sucks dick your kid is cooler than both you and your dumb bitch wife just let her go through it she's six bro she's a six-year-old little fucking kid i don't know what i have to tell this let her cook i think she'll figure it out yeah. That is how my mom explained school to me when I didn't want to go. That like the point of school is that you have to do things you don't like doing. You have to eat a shit sandwich and smile sometimes in life. Yeah. I do yeah. think, however, though, if you did, if you contacted the school or, you know, even were so bold as to contact CPS about these parents or this kid, <laughs> they would send Peter and Paul to uh, from funny games to this household <laughs> it might be the right move who knows i think so i think i don't i don't fuck with these parents at all i like this kid she seems pretty yeah. cool a, a baby that doesn't want to learn shit that fucking that brags all the time <laughs> I, I honestly relate to this kid a lot we are like i'm the fuck she's like i'm the fucking man do not bring a book around me motherfucker <laughs> what am i a fucking nerd <laughs> suck my dick i'm not learning shit she honestly i have a lot in common with this little kid and i like her a lot and this letter like uh, brings to my I think I think Felix you had the idea that like uh, Adderall obviously a uh, dope drug but it should only be given to people who have jobs like if you have a job that you have to sit at a computer take Adderall it works but like yeah. what work like what work are you doing as a fucking eight year old that requires like medicinal speed to get through <laughs> yeah, like what's yeah, so what's yeah. so fucking important uh, well, having all- these parents. Yeah, it's it's also the thing of like you can tell these people are annoying because they're like, why is my kid the best? Why she we she has all the confidence of being the best because we tell her she's the best every day, but she's not <laughs> actually she's not actually doing anything. And it's like you have to teach it. You have to teach the kid to do stuff. These people are just very fucking annoying. They're already you can tell they're already worried about like they're doing that thing where it's like, well, if she falls behind in first grade, then that that will impact what middle school she gets into. What, what middle school she gets into impacts what high school she gets into. She can't get into a good college, and now she's sucking cock on the street. And it's like, just fucking. <laughs> it's just like it's a little kid. Let her have some pudding and buy. You know what I mean? It's just like these people stink. I hate them, and we should co- we should find them and call child protective services if. That's my that's what I say we do. We get them out of we get that child out of her clutches. And you know what? Maybe we raise her as podcasters. We raise her <laughs> a as style. a baby uh, between the four of us. I think we can figure it out. I have. Um, okay. I think that's a great idea. I um I've been trying to get all of my exes back at once. <laughs> and I think that if I raise a baby with three other adult male friends of mine, they'll see that I'm serious now. 
they'll be like, oh, he probably doesn't have like a ton of stuff on the floor now. No, because it's like no. a kid would just eat that stuff off the floor and die. And the, exactly. kid, the kid he's sharing with his friends like is like goat very much long. alive. Perfect. Yeah, I love I love this. I love this baby. And I, I pray that she doesn't turn into a piece of shit like her parents. Although the odds are stacked against her. Well, OK, problem yeah, stay solved. Strong, baby. We are intervening. We are repossessing this child and uh, raising them <laughs> as a sort of like uh, sort of. A, a four-sided dad collective and you know absolutely they, they will be cool they will be cool at this point okay uh next question you know this is uh, this this touches on you know like sort of a like a, sort of social issues so it's a uh, okay. dear care and feeding how do i make my life more diverse specifically <laughs> how can i help ensure my kids grow up in a racially and economically diverse community when our actual community is anything but for context, we are moving at the end of the summer for my husband's job from a huge East Coast city to a smallish Midwestern one. It's obviously been an insane market to try to find a house, and I'm thrilled that we landed one that, uh, landed on one that has a great public schools and is the most diverse, decent public schools in the city, but it's still 84% white. There are black and brown people in the city, but not many in our immediate neighborhood. It's really, really important to me that my kids grow up around families that don't look like ours, but I don't know how to begin when it won't be as easy as befriending families in our neighborhood school. I also want to authentically befriend other moms and not just be a crazy white lady driving around asking black moms if they want to hang out sometime. Do I just enthusiastically <laughs> embrace the families at school who fall into the other 16% and try to organically let it grow from there? Look for book clubs in other neighborhoods and hope I meet people? This is also tied to the fact that, in general, I have no idea how to make new friends as an adult, aside from friends of friends, who are, in my case, all white. I also, of course, mm. don't want to make anyone feel pressured to be friends with us or to feel like I only want to be their friend because they're not white. Am I overthinking this? I just worry if I don't make a concerted effort, my, pass of, my path of least resistance will end up with only white kids and families in our lives. And I want more for my own kids. So, I mean, You know like, what? Yeah. She, should, uh, she should think about it this way. Uh, if she really wants to, you know, uh, uh, advance the cause of racial justice in this country, she should uh, give the black and brown people of her town the gift of not interacting with her. <laughs> she sounds like a fucking chore. <laughs> Honestly, though, this, yeah. this thing, this makes me think that there is a, still a spot uh, in the gig economy that hasn't been yet addressed. Mm. A, a, a app where if you're just. Uh, a racial minority, you can be hired to hang out with anxious white liberals who want to diversify their lives. Yes, you can put you can uh, there's there's different levels of it where it's like you could you come for a half hour, you take you bring four outfits, everyone takes pictures as if it's different occasions. <laughs> we bring we bring we bring a we bring a Christmas tree. We bring a full Thanksgiving dinner. And in two hours, you have every major holiday. You have, you know, we'll bring a black guy. We'll bring, we'll bring a Hmong, a Hmong family. <laughs> uh, we'll just, we'll get it all. We'll, you know, a, 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 and then a, a, a Latino best friend to your kids. You, you get to just, uh, you get your Instagram pictures done. You get your Facebook done. And then you can, you know, start, start from there. And I think that's, a, that is a great business venture, Matt. I think you're yeah. really onto something. Imagine, something imagine how much a, a, a black family could charge for invitations to their cookout. Yes. <laughs> yes. This this service this service would be something like a cross between a notary public and an escort. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. This is 100%. a great idea. Uh, I, you so know, like, we always say that the American economy is like out of growth, declining profits, uh, no new ideas, nothing good. We're at an awkward time in technology, sort of the equivalent to the 1970s, where any new idea is in its awkward adolescence where it won't be workable for another 20 years. This is an actual innovation in the service sector. It's true. Absolutely. So that's I mean, that's one way to that's one way to attack it. But. Yeah, there's no way this woman is so like. I mean, like her problem a, is that she's asking a, a question, question. Like she's asking a question, like, uh, like how, how do I like seek out like the Terminator of black families to be friends with, but like you know, <laughs> yeah. but, but but not killing them, just being friends with them. But then she's yeah, like, how yeah, do I yeah. convince them that I'm not doing that? <laughs> right, right, right. That's what I was gonna say. It's like just because you're aware of what's going on doesn't mean it's not weird. Right. You know what I mean? It's like there's no way like, to pursue this goal in a way that doesn't give away to anyone you interact with what a freak you are. 
Oh my God! It would she she's it's coming across so hard in this in text. I don't want to be that I crazy white imagine. lady. Too late, ma'am. <laughs> I would love I would love to see a picture of this woman. Yes, like one picture where she's looking at just like a white mom from her school, and another picture where she's looking at a at a black mom from her school, and just see how much her eyes dilate, her pupils are dilated <laughs> when she looks at the black mom, and just in that moment, the hope that a black woman might find her cool. Oh my god! Because it's like. Here's the other thing. I'm guessing she wasn't like she's like it would have been easy back on the East Coast. It's like, really? How I would love the statistics on how many non-white friends she had. We're in her white East friends, Coast honestly. I kind of want to know that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, like, she does. She does like zero. It's get, you're getting a little cocky being like, yeah, I'm just going to get some uh, some minority friends to diversify here. Well, well yeah. parents like parents like this um, moved mountains to segregate their kids schools on the east coast <laughs> like, like par- parents like this You're like so fucking right you, they like they, they they like change the topography of new york in order yeah. to only go to school with parents exactly like them a hundred percent truly a hundred percent and they're just think because because they get uh because they buy bananas at a bodega sometimes that they're not racist <laughs> Um, yeah, I, I mean, also it's like, how do you even, she brings up a good point. It's like, how do you even make just regular friends as a fucking <laughs> yeah. adult? That, that's fucking weird and hard to do. Um, I just think this lady's fucked and, uh, <laughs> yep. you know, there's no, there's no way around it. Um, you just kind of have to like, that's, that's, that honestly does speak to how all of this shit is beyond your control. Cause what she's saying is like, well, we moved somewhere where it's expensive and there aren't any minorities. And it's like. I, but I want minority friends, and it's like, all right, well, that's the problem. Yeah. It's just like the like our fu- <laughs> like you fucking live in a in a place that Felix is right. It's like either the people just like you a generation ago made it so that like no black people live there. <laughs> so it's like so now you can't be like, well, what if I drive drive to a shittier neighborhood and try and start a book club? What if I what if I what if I bring a box full of Toni Morrison novels and see who who it attracts and then I can force them to talk to me about the bluest eye? <laughs> that's, that's, you know, like it's just like you suck dick, lady. <laughs> like no, Matt's right. I wouldn't wish this on any wouldn't wish friendship with this woman on anyone except maybe the lady from the first question. Yes. Yeah, those two, should, road these two together, should be friends. Honestly. Yeah. Well, maybe, um, you know, in special forces, they have this thing called procurement missions where you're mm-hmm. not you're dropped in country without any of your gear. You have to get your own weapons and everything yeah. like that. And yeah. she could be dropped in East New York without any of her book club materials or right. the next door app or anything. Yes. And then, you know, uh, become a force multiplier in that way with <laughs> yeah. whatever friend she makes. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Um, so I don't know, you know, and it's it's tough because these like I guess she is sort of on to something here, but it's just like, well, I don't know what to tell you. It's like if it was that important to you, you would have just like stayed where you were. You know what I mean? Or you would have like sought that out like you would have sought a different neighborhood out. It's so funny that the most diverse school is 18 percent just not white. That's that's <laughs> fucking hysterical. That's that's the one that they really needed to get into. <laughs> Shout out to Baltimore City Public Schools. It was awesome. It was awesome. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah. of, it was like there was like four percent white. It was like it was my school was literally like 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 ten percent white, and half of it was like, and we was just like all white trash or just Greek kids. It was it was honestly pretty fucking sick. Well, so do you have any practical advice about how to make friends? Then just just um, don't don't be the eighty percent majority <laughs> of any place yeah, that you're the, in. Be, I, yeah, yeah, exactly. Well, that's the funny thing is like. I definitely was a, a a race trader in many ways where it was like, because you're Greek, you could be like, I'm less white than the fucking white kids. I'm the, <laughs> I'm the best. And we're like, we had nothing to do with slavery. <laughs> like that, that was, that was my way in. Um, and also just be good at sports uh, and make fun and be uh, a uh, charismatic bully when you had to be. <laughs> if you were fat as shit, if you were fat as shit in Baltimore public schools, you needed to find someone with a little fucked up leg, or like, uh, you know, or like, or like, uh, or like someone fatter than you. Or it didn't help that I didn't get pussy, so you had to find someone that was a bigger loser, bad at sport. You know, you had to figure yeah. it all out. Well, ableism gets a bad rap, but it's probably prevented a lot of racism. Yeah. <laughs> 
<laughs> yes, it brought it brought yeah. La- laughing at someone with a with a limp brought us all together. The me and they were you know whatever. Yeah, um, what you said about like being Greek, I always think that's like the weird racial politics like kids and young people have are kind of interesting. We're like yeah. one of I have a very distinct memory of when I was working at a bar in Minnesota and there was this like piece of shit off duty cop that would always come in and just like (laughs) unconditionally, like just start a pointless argument with like whichever black guy he saw at the bar in St. Paul. So like not a ton of black dudes, but if, if there was one in there, he was starting an argument with him for no reason. And one night he, it was like a worse argument than usual. And it almost like, escalated it almost became a fight and we separated them and thankfully like the piece of shit cop left and you know the guy the guy who he got into an argument with was explaining it to one of the bouncers who's a black dude and he's explaining it and he's going yeah and then no offense this white boy came up uh talking about the cop and then the other bouncer points to me and goes oh he's jewish and the, the the fucking the fucking uh the, the, the guy hugs me and he's like i didn't know and it was like in that moment i, I was it, i was kind of conflicted because right. it's like well that's like my grandparents worked really hard for me to be white yeah yeah but yeah yeah, yeah. I, on the other hand like sure i'll take it Thank you. Totally. Well, listen, yeah. I think Jews get one every once in a while. I think historically you're owed a, a, a couple hugs from a black guy versus what you guys <laughs> what you guys were up, you know, were up against, uh, you know, not you specifically. But, you know, it's been tough. A couple a couple big L's for the Jews uh, through, uh, through mean, history. Yeah, for sure. But I just think like in America, that guy was being inc- they were both being incredibly charitable to me. No, I know. And that's the funny thing is like. Like literally, I had a coach on the football team. Like, for so, it's so funny because what I'm remember, like the one of the memories I'm re- remembering is like one kid was going in on one of the white trash kids. I think literally because of slavery, and then he he and then I was laughing because it was a hysterical situation. And he looks at me, he's like, "What are you laughing at?" And literally, my coach jumped in. He was like. You got to understand, Greek people had nothing to do with it. <laughs> <laughs> my coach was like, he's good. He didn't say stop. No one had anything to do with it. He was like, point all your attention to the white trash kid that was born in America. <laughs> it was like, <laughs> <laughs> It is right. It's as if like Greek people aren't racist. As hell. You know what I mean? Yeah, it's the yeah. Part is like yeah, they're it, uh, racist as shit. He's like, yeah, Giannis just got his citizenship after he won the championship of the Bucks. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. And insanely, insanely. Uh, but yeah, no, to stop. Like, along those lines, remind me this. Go ahead. No, I was gonna say along those lines, just uh, like more beneficial than um, starting a book club. Would you would you recommend as a strategy picking out, let's say, any Turkish kids in your school and just denigrating and attacking them? Ooh. Interesting. Yes. Yeah. Well, <laughs> one of my best friends is literally Albanian. And there there is like we did do like uh, Balkan. Like, I honestly, my ironic racism is so deep in what I find funny because my best friend in starting from kindergarten is Albanian and Greek people are racist towards <laughs> Albanians. And we would do it as a bit starting at like age age five you know what i mean so it's like that was always fun and that's from a young age i was like oh this is ridiculous that someone would actually be racist towards them because he's born like you know the country right above us and i thought that was funny from the jump so yeah i think a little a little fun ironic racism early on can be nice and honestly you know what the real fucking like not to go fucking you know disney movie remember the titans but it's like Get your kids playing fucking sports, dude. Sports is just like everyone on sports is on a team. Stop. That's the way to do it. It sounds like you're it sounds like your fucking kids are probably losers that read too much. <laughs> Not like the cool little four year old that didn't ever want to learn. But get your kids in some sports. It fucking that's some of my best friends still to this day. Like I went to DC. It's like I saw a bunch of my friends from Baltimore that we play like soccer, fucking football, lacrosse with, uh wrestling. It was fucking sick. So that's that's your way in, but the people that fucking write into Slate, their kids don't play fucking anything but, I don't know, some 
like cross country. I unironically love Remember the Titans. It's one of the best it's airplane. A it's sick a, movie. It's dude. one of the best movies to watch on an airplane. If you're on an airplane, it's just like it's oh, the 100%. perfect. It's the perfect airplane watching movie, and it's about how it is about how sports uh, conquers racism. The scene where Denzel, the scene where Denzel takes him to the Gettysburg battlefield and gives that fucking inspirational speech. <laughs> yeah. Oh my god! <laughs> yes, tears yeah. in my eyes. Tears in my and, eyes. And no joke, that literally is like. Everyone loves sports. Everyone from every like fucking background. S- someone puts their kid in sports from every background. You're actually probably better off other than a fucking lame ass book club is just making your kid play fucking soccer hoops or fucking, you know, football like that's that's the you know what? It took us a while, but that's what it is, dude. Sports are the sports answer. conquers all. If we don't come together right now on this hollow ground. We too will be destroyed. Just like they were. I don't care if you like each other or not. But you will respect each other. And maybe, I don't know, maybe you will. Learn to play this game like men. All right, I gotta get, I gotta get to the next question. Uh, uh, this is this is a question I think uh, I think Felix will have some opinions on as it deals with I exotic pets. So it says, Dear Karen right. Feeding, I have a seven-year-old daughter, B, and we live two houses over from her best friend, Stacy, also the same age. The two girls go to school together and frequently stay over at each other's houses now that everyone's fully vaccinated. Stacy's parents recently got a pet fox. This is legal where we live, although we would have to have had register the animal as an exotic pet. I wasn't worried at first, but now I'm not so sure. The fox isn't violent or anything, but almost every time she comes back from their house, B tells some hilarious giggling story about how the fox stole food or the TV remote or a bracelet or something else and ran around the house holding it in his mouth or trying to bury it somewhere. Last evening at dinner, B tried to steal some fries from my plate and tried to pass it off as a silly joke. I gave her a lecture about how it's wrong to steal even as a joke, and I think it's sunk in. But I'm worried about the lessons she's picking up from this animal, and I'm considering not letting her go what over to fu- Stacy's house anymore. What the is this is a step going too on? far? <laughs> what is wrong with <laughs> these people? <laughs> these people are out of their fucking mind. What do they think life is a fucking cartoon? <laughs> that the fox is teaching it lesson, teaching their child lessons these fucking morons <laughs> lessons from a fox no if you're learning lessons from this uh this reynard type figure at your fucking uh friend's <laughs> daughter's house i mean the fox the fox is teaching good lessons it's teaching how to outwit your opponents it's a teaching right. how to be like uh you know how to how to outwit the noble lion or the or the the frightening uh wolf or whatever bear or whatever. Of course, the fox course. always wins. And I just love the detail about like she tr- she stole French fries off my plate as a joke, and then we sat her down no, and I'm gave her a lecture. Sure. About yeah, I'm pretty pretty sure she just fr- wanted the fries. Just wanted the fries. <laughs> yeah. God, this is fucking crazy. These are ridiculous questions to ask. Like, <laughs> these are. These I don't three even people. Need to have their children taken from them, and then they need to be uh, a twenty four seven camera surveillance that I get to watch. I mean, because I want to see these people in like actual day to day situations. People who are worried that their children uh, aren't getting like the the USDA you're, recommended amount of diversity in their daily lives. What you're, or they're not what motivated you're enough. S- they haven't read enough uh, Rich Dad Poor Dad by the time they're eight. Uh, and that, that they're getting bad. They're getting badly influenced by mischievous neighborhood. Woodland creatures. I need to see these people in action. (laughs) If you see them, it's going to be a lot of people leaving like negative Yelp reviews. Or it's going to be a lot of people asking for their money back from Uber Eats because they forgot a side of ranch or something like that. That's what you'll that's what you'll see from these fucking tattletale ass motherfuckers. I mean, Um, it it just like, you know, you've heard the phrase too clever by half, you know, to describe somebody who. Faced with a straightforward problem or situation, uh, comes up with such a convoluted explanation that they, you know, they're 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 very far from any solution. I think this is a step beyond that. This is mm-hmm. they're thinking themselves into believing what cavemen believe. <laughs> 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 the spirit of the fox has gotten into my child's <laughs> nostrils. Yeah, you could see the actual the the soul of it getting into it. 
Yeah, it's like, yeah, here's the solution. You just have her, let her sleep outside on a full moon. That ought to call, that, ought, that ought to fucking, that ought to cure all the fucking, the soul poisoning that the fo- the mischievous fox spirit has done. Um, I mean, it's ridiculous. Like, first of all, a dog behaves exactly the same way. Like a poorly trained dog would do all of these things. Take a bracelet, take a toy, take fries. It has nothing to do with a fox. Like what the, you're just, literally it's like this person has like watched Robin Hood and was like, I don't want that sexy fox seducing my child. Like it's it's this is true. You're right. Felix, they're thinking like a fucking caveman or a baby would think like they, like it's almost like the baby's like the fox told me something really interesting. They're like, what? <laughs> this fox is talking to you. We have to get it away from that fox. Yeah, these people would believe David Berkowitz. It's awful. It's awful what he did, but we really need to start looking at that dog. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, uh, outside the insanity of the letter writer, though, Felix, uh, what are your opinions on having foxes, foxes as exotic pets? Well, um. Russians are kind of at the forefront of creating a domesticated fox subbreed. And um, yeah, yeah, didn't they make those foxes that like piss themselves whenever a, <laughs> uh, uh, like human touches them or whatever? Like they've been doing it for generations now. Yeah, they've been they've been working pretty hard on it. And there are people who just, you know, will get a regular fox. Often what happens with animals like that, like sort of smaller, like dog sized woodland creatures uh usually what happens is someone will rehabilitate an injured fox or an injured weasel or a raccoon or something with the goal of after their injury is healed you know releasing them back in the wild and oftentimes during that rehabilitation process the animal gets bonded with the person and more importantly they lose their fear of people they lose their fear mm. of people so you know, they might get too gregarious when they're out there and might end up getting killed or taken away by animal control so that they're stuck with right. it. And it can be, you know, it's a lot of these are clearly not meant to be pets, but some people have very sweet relationships with their fox. Um, Sarah Benito <laughs> from the band Kira Kira Benito, I think, has a pet fox. Um, OK, they're, it's they're, interesting. That's a, that's like a, in, in domestics, like in, a, in captivity situations, very quickly uh, they get they like within a few generations their features start becoming more dog-like yeah it's it happens very fast it's interesting yeah it's like dog is the template for uh you know broken animal but uh, yeah for a yeah yeah. if you had to choose between the starting point of fox or wolf you would start with fox a hundred percent of the time yeah yeah i i i i would have to know more about these fox owners Mm -hmm. um Mm -hmm. but Mm -hmm. if it's already smart enough to um you know talk about grooming turn this innocent girl into a thief um i think they're doing a good job i think they're doing a wonderful job i i i i think everyone everyone except uh the english upper class likes foxes though yeah. i'm pretty yeah. sure right right which, is, which means they're cool from, uh, the yeah. center of the earth if the shittiest people that have, that have ever been created okay. which is the pasty ass <laughs> fucking bullshit ass royals yeah. If they don't like you, then you're fucking you're pretty sick. I like so, yeah, okay. everyone loves everyone loves these creatures and the British upper class has been fighting for years for their right to kill it in the most excruciating, painful <laughs> way possible. <laughs> All right, so here okay, now now we've now we've now drilled down into the the practical advice giving here for this concerned parent. What you're gonna need to do is muster together thirty or forty people with six toes and no chin to yes. get on horseback uh, surrounded by 800 dogs and just lead, yeah. and just lead them on a hunt to this suburban house that's right and, and make sure make sure they have bugles uh make sure everyone is yep. dressed like a complete fucking tit little uh, fucked up leather caps yeah, yeah. They got to look really fucking stupid. And yeah, and someone like, you get at least five guys who were molested at boarding school to hunt this fox, <laughs> hunt this fox down. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, maybe they could combine. Uh, they could combine the two cultures and do a land acknowledgement before the fox hunt. <laughs> That's probably All coming right. anyway. 
All right. Well, we got it. We got to Okay, we got to get to our. Uh, this is our. This is our last uh, letter uh, of of the episode. Okay. But I, I was. Here, I was feeding. Uh, some Irish travelers showed up at my door, and I'm concerned <laughs> they replaced my baby with a changeling. I <laughs> uh, no, no. Th- 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 this last letter is not about uh, child control. It's about okay. wife. It's about wife control. Oh, Hell yeah, yeah. control your bitch. <laughs> I'm, I'm interested to hear what you guys will have to make of this. So it says. Okay, so this, this is this is not this is actually to the the sort of um, financial advice uh, column, but it mm. says, "Dear dear Pater, my wife started a charity and has been soliciting everyone for donations to it. She spams people on social media with messages and posts, and if we run into someone in person, she'll flat out ask people to hand her cash or a check on the spot, and if they demur, Damn. she'll try to give them her, her their uh, Venmo, PayPal, etc. information so she can send them a request." Wow. It definitely makes some people uncomfortable, and she doesn't want to take no for an answer. The worst part is that the charity is more or less a way for her to fund an eclectic hobby of hers. Think along the lines of knitting high-end sweaters for animals. <laughs> and it, no. doesn't, it doesn't really do anything for the community. She recently cro- oh she re- okay, it gets worse. She recently crossed the line when my boss's wife posted a fundraiser for a suicide prevention on Facebook in honor of her late brother who sadly died last year from suicide. The caption talked about how much he had meant to her and that it was really sad. I donated to the fundraiser and not only was my wife mad that I donated to it instead of hers, don't know why as we share our finances and she can just go buy anything she may need without me donating. But worse, she commented on the fundraiser post with a link for people to donate to her own charity and posted she hoped that people wouldn't overlook her worthwhile cause if they were feeling generous. Everyone else had been commenting condolences and supportive stuff. My boss's wife deleted what my wife had posted and she defriended, blocked her. Then my That's bo- awesome. Then I my bo- love her. <laughs> then, my bo- then my boss took me aside at work and relate to me how upset his wife was about the incident and asked me not to bring my wife to any work events for the time being. <laughs> Hell <We> are- <laughs> yes. My wife thinks people are jealous and uncomfortable that she's doing charitable work when they are not. And she insists oh that people are being ridiculous and that she's doing nothing wrong in the way she's asking for money. My wife has been unreasonable and a bit socially out of touch in the past but never to this degree. I am embarrassed and angry, and I'm afraid she's putting us in jeopardy and socially burning bridges for us. How can I get her to stop, and how do we mend fences with the people she's aggravated? The letter is signed, my wife is out of hand. (laughs) Look, I'm sorry. Uh, You're worried about people committing suicide? What is more likely to prevent someone from killing themselves than they see an adorable animal in a sweater? Yeah. She commented, she was like, hey, maybe your brother wouldn't have sucked on the tailpipe of a Nissan Sentra if she had just seen him, seen my fucking a pug with a fucking a pug with little pants on. Maybe maybe he would have fucking he would have lived another day. <laughs> what a dumb bitch, dude. This Honestly, it's rules. like we got to This is another one. These four broads, we truly. need to bring them together in. It's it's unbelievable that she would fucking behave this way. And honestly, if you're this guy, what do you even do? You have to kill like, her. <laughs> <laughs> like I I I I I'm not saying commanding him to kill her. I think if you bring that to any psychologist, divorce lawyer, anyone, they'll just be like, You have to kill her. You have to throw the wife out. Yeah. I think if you're this guy, she you broke. have to- <laughs> I'm not even joking when I say you should divorce this woman. Yes. <laughs> it's like that's Make your that own is death. So, Do something. Like, okay, if it was her, like, let's say she had a charity and it was for, like, a rare type of cancer that her f- brother died from, then it's like, hey, I understand how much this means to you, but you just have to be a little more couth with the way you go about things. But the fact that this is just bullshit. <laughs> Absolute drivel. Absolute <laughs> drivel. She's making fucking she's making fucking cardigans for corgis and she's and she's fucking hitting people up nonstop. Just a shameless person. There's no saving. You're right. It's like when a horse breaks its leg, when a white woman starts accosting people for, for her fake charity where so she can knit sweaters for dogs. She's got you got to put her down. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, man. Like it, it, it would be it would be insane. It would already be insane if she was like doing 
I mean, I'm pretty much like against chari- most charity because it is all this. Like it is the root of all charity. Most people aren't as antisocial and insane as this woman, but it, sure. it's kind of like the same thought process that instead of everyone, everyone paying a higher tax rate and the state taking care of these things because they are rights, uh, whether it is, uh, you know, families being able to feed themselves or dogs needing sweaters uh, <laughs> yeah. that they <laughs> should provide, instead of it being uh, just this thing that we all do, they want to be thanked. Yeah. Uh, right. But totally. This is like, I guess this is sort of a nature versus nurture thing, because I'm assuming these are upper middle class people, right? Oh, yeah. You wouldn't. I don't think there's a lot of like the the white working class or uh, or or black working class or anyone writing these letters. Right. Mm -hmm. Probably not. Um, But this woman has the personality of sort of, yeah, a white trash woman who whenever anyone, uh, you know, they're like, oh, uh, Trina had a miscarriage. Oh, well, I I was kidnapped yesterday. (laughs) Yeah, yeah. (laughs) I didn't tell anyone till now. Yeah, 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 yeah. A hundred percent. Yes. Okay. I actually, it's definitely, a, it's definitely an attention. I mean, the post on the fucking, that's next level. <laughs> dude. It's just like, it has nothing to do with you. Why the, f- it's just on your Facebook feed and you felt like you needed to like plug your, like, it's just, even if it wasn't charity, if it was just like, you guys post about your podcast and I was like, in the replies, I was like, hey, listen to my podcast. That would be weird. N- let alone it's about your brother who killed himself. <laughs> I, I, I got to say, uh, this woman, she has the personality of one of my repliers. Mm, <laughs> so, like, yeah, that's e- true. <laughs> yeah. You know, even if she is exiled from her friend group and divorced and cast out, there is one community of like minded people where she would fit in. That's absolutely it, right. It is my reply. <laughs> I have. Um, uh, yeah, I don't know. I have an idea, though, about how um, uh, this out of hand wife and one of our previous letter writers, I think we can sort of like uh, meld their two concerns together. So we've got the out of hand wife who is running a charitable organization to um, knit cute little outfits for animals. Well, what's an animal that could use sort of like a, like a nice job interview outfit? Well, it's the crazy fox that's out of control. It's sort of like <laughs> we can get like sort of respectability fox. politics, sort of pull up your pants, just tuck in <laughs> yes, your shirt yes, kind yes, of thing yes, for foxes yes. where we can get and a, a court suit so like, for the fox. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, so that's to court President acting. Obama, get your own damn fries. <laughs> <laughs> That's bu- that's brilliant thinking, Will. <laughs> yeah, because I mean, these foxes—they're—they're. They're, I mean, like they're—they're—they're they're just not behaving the right way, you know. If you ever want to get a totally. job, or you know, not get yes. stopped by the police they walking need to be home, articulate. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um. The other thing is like I and again, th- what's fascinating to me about people like this is I would love to know how these people fuck. Like, <laughs> there, there's no way this guy is serving good cock. You know, if, it, if his if his wife is this out of pocket. It might be, I hate to be, you know, I'm a simple man. Everything I really, and especially in a relationship, I really do feel like a huge part comes down to what's going on while you fuck. And this guy might need to fucking take some classes. He might need to figure out a way to dick his wife down so that she'll behave. Honestly, same And I'm thing. sorry to be crass, yeah. but I just think that at a, at a certain point, this might be like she's she's acting this way. It's a sign of distress. She's like, I haven't gotten my back walls hit in years and it's turning my brain to mush. Somebody needs to fuck and he either needs to step up and do it himself or he needs to become a cuck. Watch someone just absolutely wreck his wife and then they take it out on him. And that way she ridicules him while he's got his soft little four inch penis in (laughs) his hand and she's getting wrecked by some kind of, you know, huge cock. Uh, they, They ridicule him. She doesn't act out in public. I think that's the only way to to sublimate her desires to be this much of a dumb bitch. He's got to be the <laughs> sacrificial lamb, and either he has to learn how to dick her down, or he has to become a cu- a turbo cuck yeah. and take it take take in all the abuse so that 
She doesn't behave this way on Facebook. She doesn't behave this way at the grocery store. It's like uh, like 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 hack stand up comedians and like their all their materials about like how what a bitch their wife or girlfriend is. And like I remember seeing this one guy on Comedy Central years ago, and he was just like, "Hey, uh, you ever notice how men and women are like so different after sex?" He's like, "You know, like uh, you know, a- after I climax, like you know, like I fucking I'm I'm in a coma. I can't move. And then like after sex, my girlfriend she's vacuuming the floors, she's fucking painting the walls, she's cooking a pot roast. Like, wait, why she have so much energy?" And I'm like. A G, I fuck, I fucking wonder why, dude. <laughs> like, yeah, there's yeah, probably yeah. something relaxing <laughs> about what you're doing. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. I, yeah. That is that. That is an old Louis bit too, where he's like, because you just, he was like, if you fuck a woman right, she'll want nothing to do with you or something. I think <laughs> yeah. that's the punchline. Um, but yes, a hundred percent. That's that's, and a lot of these people that call that write into Slate, they're probably not busting. No, nope, correctly, nope. and. You know, and that can affect anyone. I mean, this is yeah, if this I go is... a while without busting, I go, I, I get start getting squirrely in the brain. You know what I mean? <laughs> you start yeah. googling uh, emergency exit, subway station, smoke grenade. <laughs> I um uh earmuffs for my family, earmuffs for my family. If you're my family and listening, earmuffs don't listen. Skip this part. <laughs> I am proud to say that absolutely none of the women I've had sex with after I had sex with them engaged in any charitable activity. <laughs> it Zero. Be safe every <laughs> Zero. Not every even during 2020. They didn't even change their abbeys to black squares. <laughs> That's what a good job I did. <laughs> it would be great if after every single, every single woman you fucked afterwards, unrelated, all started charities to learn how to grow uh, cock cells in a lab. (laughs) (laughs) Like, well, this must be a coincidence. (laughs) Well, yeah, okay, like, look, 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 look at, like, um, uh, Mackenzie Bezos, right? After she got Mm -hmm. divorced, she starts giving billions of dollars to, like, the most bullshit charities you've ever heard of. Yeah, like yeah. I, I'm a I'm a fan of bad charities. I love following them, like the shitty charities that billionaires support. And I hadn't even heard of any of these. That's she was awesome. like, you know, she's she's like, I'm giving three billion dollars to a program that tells the underclass how to be playwrights. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you know, and I think we learned a bit about Jeff Bezos that day. That's oh, true. absolutely. Shout no out game. to that teacher, by the way. There's no the guy Mackenzie Bezos, the public teacher that she ended up like. Uh, public school teacher she ended up marrying salute my brother dig <laughs> yes. his way into yes. ha- dip to, dip his way into like however many billies he just respect. has to he just has to he has to the, this is a challenge for him he's got to keep it he, he's got to keep it up he's got to be able to satisfy oh, yeah. her because if he doesn't she's just going to keep fucking putting this money out the door and it's like <laughs> if she if he's not if he's not like on point he's Laid not focused down. on satisfying her she's going to end mm-hmm. up spending like all the money trying to like genetically create a real anti-racist baby yeah <laughs> yeah <laughs> this guy absolutely this guy has to find her tiny clit you know and we know yeah. she has one because she's obnoxious um or else she's going to spend all his money uh, before they can buy Roman Abramovich's super yacht out of possession <laughs> from the treasury. <laughs> and that's, you know, that would be tragic. It would be tragic. I think we have, uh, I think we've solved everyone's, I think we've solved the problems. Uh, we solved the problems of uh, women, uh, racism, uh, uh, yep. uh, the pets, and charity on today's show. Yes, that's so, right. Yeah, and to, and to recap, uh, racism, football will se- will solve it. Mm-hmm. Uh, pets, get them a little, get them a little sweater. Uh, <laughs> women, dick them down. <laughs> <laughs> and children, is, honestly, and children if, just don't do it. That doesn't apply to children. Show, the people who complain about this show should listen to this one, and they'd be right. Yeah, <laughs> this particular one that you did, <laughs> the one with the one with <laughs> this was oh, like also, 2003. Opie and Anthony. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And that's the that's we call that the Stavros effect. <laughs> I, and the, and the I rest- um I, I would like to add another lesson though. If a loved one Please. takes their own life, you know, you yes. may be confronted you may be confronted by some demons. You may you may go through a lot yourself. How could I not see this? This is awful. You know, I, I hope that no one ever loses someone close to them to suicide. But if it does happen, I hope that you realize that you have a chance you have a chance to make the world better and that is allow your friend to post about her dog sweater charity under the announcement (laughs) you know don't also be selfish 
Come on. Pay we owe it to those pit bulls. Let's warm up those pit bull nipples. <laughs> yes. <laughs> oh, and uh, I, I finally lesson, lesson, most important lesson. Um, just let your let your first grader just chill out and just sort of yeah. like exist. You know, hundred percent. It's not it's not a problem if they're well, if they lack, cartoons. If they lack sufficient motivate motivation. Yes. Like what's fully seven year old wants to fucking play piano. It's like, hey, let me see about this. Oh, this is fun. It's not fun anymore. I don't want to do it anymore. That's fine. Yeah. Most people don't know how to play the piano, and yeah. very few of them like learned at that age anyway. Chill out. Well, my brother, my brother learned how to play the piano pretty quick, but he's like a good person, and most people's oh, kids yeah. aren't. <laughs> so, you you know. heard it here first, folks. Felix's brother is smarter than that dumb little bitch. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I mean, but we were lucky enough that there was never a fox in our backyard. Who knows what? <laughs> could turn out like me. <laughs> That's right. Imbuing you with the spirit of mischief. Uh, well, uh, before we go, Stavi, uh, one more time, if people want to check out the uh, the new and amazing yes. stand-up special, the, the One Million Diamond, Diamond Cock Heart That's right. uh, stand-up That's special right. with Stav at the, uh, what is it, the Lodge Room? Live at the Lodge Room, my first special. It's on my YouTube channel, uh, youtube.com slash Stavi Baby. I do, it, I, I post on there a lot. I'm working on my YouTube channel a lot. I've tried to grow it a lot this year. So uh, the special's out there right now. There's also, I post short videos every day. And I'm gonna let the sh- I'm gonna let the special breathe a little bit, but usually what I do is I also just post two longer clips from just like little outtakes from the tour, fun little pieces of crowd work, whatever. So I post a lot on that YouTube channel. I think you'll like it. And uh, yeah, you know all the socials, all that kind of stuff. My tour is ending right now. I'll be back on tour in the fall, but I'm taking a few months off. So just check out Stavi Biz is the website S T A V V Y dot Biz. You can find all info on. You know, the special merch, upcoming tour dates that I'm, I'll am i be announcing the I'm doing a, a, an abbreviated tour in the fall. I'm only going to hit about five cities, I think. Um, and then a big one in 2023. So, yeah, that's Stavi.biz. Go to YouTube, Stavi Baby. I appreciate you guys. Thanks for having me on. Uh, always off, Stav, have you collected your uh, YouTube plaque for 100,000 subscribers? I don't know where to get it. No, where the fuck is I don't know. I, I was I've been waiting. I'll send you a link. Hell yeah, dude. I want the plaque, baby. I'm trying to get that Millie, dude. I'm trying to become a fucking YouTuber. I'm about to be Mr. Beast. I'm going to lock poor people in a cage and be like, <laughs> how long can you get this fucking the hose? I'll pour a hose on you. Every every hose spurt, you get $10,000. Can you do it, motherfuckers? That's, I'm going to transition completely out of comedy into torturing the underclass. Stop for game. YouTube views. <laughs> Stop game. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. Always a 